Joined now by head coach Anna Nims, 56 to 51 victory over Southeastern. The girls said this was one of their favorite victories of the season. Where does this rank for you as far as this season is concerned? Um, I just think it, it's it's a big win for us because it's kind of the epitome of how our season's gone. We lost by 34 when we took them on our very first game. And so it's nice to see just the continued growth to finish out with them at home and, and earn a win. Um, I just think it go, it's go ahead and proves that we've gotten better uh, game by game, slower maybe at times than we wanted. But they came out and they took care of business. And I think for the most part, we put together 40 minutes of at least effort. Uh, I thought our poise was better today. The consistency of things were better today. Uh, we had to call a couple timeouts just to check our emotions a little bit um, to reiterate, hey, we're still up one. You know, we got to play like you're up one and not down 20. And so um, it's a big win. I, I kind of prefaced it uh, back with Tyler uh, before the, in the radio. Um, last year, we were fighting, you know, at pregame, pre we were thinking, okay, well, at the end of this game, at 3 o'clock, our season was over. Um, you know, we were going to come out and we were going to give it one last, uh, one last hard try. And the girls last year came out and won. It was a similar day. Uh, actually sat in a lawn chair. That this is the exact same th way I did last year. I did it today. Um, and it's a little bit surreal. It's exciting uh, to go from one win to 12. And although, you know, we all think we should have, and myself included, at least four or five more, um, one to 12 is, is impressive. And with a brand new team, um, we're still getting to know one another. And so I'm just, I'm happy. I'm so happy I'm calm, actually. So it's just, it's different. It's a, uh, it's a good feeling to play better basketball and just to see the future uh, kind of start to show in this program. Well, it sounds like that lawn chair deserves an assist as well. I know. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's start to talk about this game. You described it, I think, perfectly in the radio interview post game. It wasn't pretty, but it was gritty. And this team has been resilient all season long. This was the perfect microcosm of that. You know, some turnovers earlier didn't shoot the basketball very well, but the defense played great throughout. Uh, this was really one of those resilient wins. It really was. You know, and Slew's one of the better outside shooting teams. Or they have high percentage shots a lot of the games. And, you know, the girls took care of the perimeter. I thought they handled their scout better. I thought we closed out better today than we had really in a long time. Um, and so I just, I thought they did a good job. Um, you know, when we come out and you have seven turnovers in the first five minutes, it's bound to be a long day. And went into halftime with 11, finished with 20. Um, but it, it is, it's credit to our defense. And a lot of those turnovers were dead ball turnovers instead of live turnovers to where it was a quick two the other way. Um, you know, and so we're able to call a couple timeouts, remind them just, and I had written it on the board, you got to beat to one drum, not to your own drum. Um, and we got to have that we over me mentality. And I thought in moments we started to get away from it, but they quickly rallied it back together. So good growth today. It was good growth collectively as a team and not just the basketball side of things, but I think just in showing some more maturity. And that was exciting. Let's talk about some of the clutch shots. Yeah, maybe didn't the percentage doesn't look good, but Jemiah Braxton stepped up big, knocked out some big threes. Mm -hmm. Candace Paramore, 10 for 10 at the free throw line and iced the game at the line late. Even though the shot wasn't falling overall, when it mattered, the team found a way. Exactly, and although Candace, you know, she had 23 in the last two games, 23 each in the last two games, and maybe she didn't finish with that, but because of what she's doing, it's allowing other players to get open looks. And because of her ability to get downhill, but 10 for 10, there's a reason she's in the top, top in the nation. Uh, you know, not just Division One, but just all the way through NCAA, she's top in the nation in free throw percentages. And so many teams, us included, you win and lose, you know, on the free throw line. And she just does a great job of stepping up with confidence after probably just falling to the ground incredibly hard. Mm -hmm. um, and never seems really rattled uh, when that takes place. She just steps up, takes care of business. So that's big. You know, I know we had, didn't talk about uh, Alicia White, but man, she just keeps the ball in play. Um, she elevates up. I thought she got a couple um, tough calls uh, just, you know, off the foul, but just her ability to rise above and, and, and create extra possessions for us, whether she's coming down with it or not, is huge. Uh, I thought Monette Bolden, uh, you know, her and Giselle both uh, played really big minutes for us tonight. We were able to sub those, those top tier kids in um, and keep them a little more fresh. We, we were able to pull our defense back and, uh, you know, whether it was that or I just think they're starting to believe in themselves a little bit more game by game. Um, just, you know, it was good. I think I completely went off track of whatever you asked me. No, it's perfect. And I'll tell you one thing I pointed out multiple times at the end of the game was Alicia White's effort and energy. She just seems to be always after it, after it, after it in the late stages of the game. Um, that's the end of the regular season. It's now time for conference tournament. How do you get your team prepared over this next, what, four and a half, five days? You know, I think Coach A made a point earlier today about just trying to get back to the basics on Monday. 
Um, and we did that on this past Monday and Tuesday, just uh, kind of fine tuning our offense, going back five on O on air and, you know, showing them we don't have to force the ball, showing them how to execute the offense in transition, um, but make it a complete practice. You know, as of late, we've really tried to go pretty easy on Mondays. We know we're going to turn around and play Thursday and Friday, but it's a different part of season. Um, so March is different for a reason. You got to kind of ramp it up. Uh, you know, go hard on Monday, really focus on us, obviously scout Tuesday, Wednesday, and see if we can't go down to Katie and make some noise. Um, but something that we're going to do is we're going to bring out the bracket uh, from uh, when in 2015, I believe it was, you know, we're going to bring out the bracket when you came in at the bottom and you played four games and you cut down nets at the end. I think our girls need to continue to remember that it's not a pipe dream to think that you could go cut down nets. Championship, champions have championship behavior. And so we've been challenging them the last you know, week. What are you willing to do to be a champion? What are you willing to do to cut down a net? Um, and just making sure they believe in it. I think too often maybe teams approach the tournament with this idea that they don't know that they really can. And so we've just tried to encourage them and empower them to believe they absolutely can. Well, Coach, another win here today. You finished the season with 12 versus one last year. I will say for, for everyone that the – the program is in the right hands, and we're all very proud of you for this season. Thank you much. doesn't happen without a great staff, great team. Um, just very happy to be here. So, Forkham Demons.